If indeed, there once was, as we often postulate, an incredibly capable ancient civilization, which after their mysterious demise, over the following eons, has become lost upon our planet, dependent upon the time in which this occurred, and the more which passes, one would expect to find less and less evidence to support their once existence. If this people created monumental structures, somehow effortlessly carved or built from the bedrocks and cliff faces of Earth, then these remnants would logically outlast any of the biodegradable objects left by this mysterious people, which would have long ago been consumed by entropy. These stones would be their final remaining mark upon our planet, cast in stone for many more years. These structures, we are convinced, exist all over the Earth, most attributed to civilizations within known history who were often simply incapable of completing these tasks. And the Castles of Eagle is no exception. According to academia, the Eagle Stone castles were built by Assyrians in 5000 BC. During its life, the castle would have been an extremely formidable fortress. It was surrounded by walls which have partially survived. Interestingly, excavations made in 1946 suggested that the castle might actually date back far before 5000 BC, with dates of 20,000 BC or more showing up on several occasions. A lot of local carved caves, which were once inhabited around the castle, nearly all date to this period. Could this dating be a more realistic proposition? Could Eagle Castle, an entire structure once masterfully hewn from a solid chunk of bedrock, actually be a pre-diluvium ruin? Like many of the other formidable and for their functioning lives virtually impenetrable fortresses, Eagle has been the cradle of many civilizations – Assyrians, Utarians, Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire, and even the Ottoman Empire – all exploited this once grand ancient fortress. Who built Eagle Castle? When did they build it? How did they build it? How did a civilization within our distant past manage to create such astonishing structures, either with enormous stones or out of them? They seemingly mastered the art of stone masonry at a very early time in our history. And thanks to this, their legacy lives on to this day. Tokyo's Imperial Palace home of the Japanese emperor and a place which holds many secrets. Some it seems hidden in plain sight for countless centuries. For many years people have visited this marvelous building and the perfectly kept grounds it is placed within. What is interesting regarding its historical history is the fact that much of it is hidden and yet to be told. The oldest historical accounts for the palace date back to 1457 AD when a great warrior known as Ido Shigetsugu built the castle Ido on the site. Ido's clan would perish in the 15th century as a result of uprisings in the Kanto and Ota Dokan regions of Japan. However, what is interesting regarding the palace's construction is its foundations, including the exterior wall, which many now believe was already in existence before the castle's construction, and also the reason the site was chosen all those years ago by the warrior Ido himself. The construction techniques visible in the original construction are clearly evidence of highly advanced building techniques, completed by a clearly highly advanced civilization. And these methods used within the foundations were not replicated throughout the more recent structure, as if forgotten between builds. Additionally, a piece of artifactual evidence was recently covered a highly compelling building technique, which unquestionably links many ancient sites to one another, found all over the world, showing an intercontinental sharing of building knowledge many millennia ago. Known as the missing metal clamps, their carved seats still present upon many of the most ancient stonework at the palace, eroded away metal clamps used to keep the stones firmly in place as they settled over the following years after construction present at countless sites across the world, a technique somehow shared worldwide, only differing from country to country in their process of manufacture. The evidence to suggest that the Palace of Japan is in fact built upon a far older and possibly once far more spectacular structure seems overwhelming. Yet questions remain, 
most obvious of which, who built the structure to begin with? When did they build it? And what was its purpose? Thankfully, the more we understand regarding the perplexing techniques used by this elusive, yet clearly once highly advanced civilization, the more of these ruins we are seemingly spotting, allowing for their study and subsequent preservation before lost forever. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Did the Great Sphinx once witness the bottom of a sea? There is evidence. Things we have covered on this channel in the past which would suggest just that. Who built these astounding structures found dotted all over the earth? When were they built? Were they really, like academia would like you to believe, built by primitive civilizations with the use of primitive tools, often made of copper and notoriously soft metal? Or is there a possibility that these structures were made by a far more ancient, far more capable, world-traversing civilization? Built in areas of geological interest, most often the center of a landmass or placed upon key lines? Although there is a large number of artifacts and archaeological factors which strongly suggest this exact scenario of events, we feel there is one collection of artifacts or rather evidence of this people's past existence, which just like their clear originally intended function, could tie these monuments neatly together. Known as the missing ancient metal clamps, given their predicted age and metallic composition, the fact that they are no more should come as no surprise. However, the carved seats that these clamps once sat within are still present in the stonework of many ancient structures found all over the world. Within our own modern-day society, a society that can travel the world in a day and speak to the other side in an instant, technological advances are often copied or shared between nations. The concepts being the same, yet the manufacture slightly differing in form and the metal clamps display this exact phenomena. Slight variations in manufacture that can be seen dependent on the landmass the ruin is found upon Yet the concept behind the construction of these amazing and perplexing structures, often constructed using blocks we have no explanation as to the placement of, remain the same worldwide. Dry stone walling often accompanied by these clamps made with such skill, the blocks are now often perceived to have been made to measure. The builders were clearly very aware of shifting, which can be seen, as blocks settled over the following years. This offers a presumption that these structures were intended to last many centuries, if not millennia, and the metal clips were also designed to indeed rust away to nothing after their function was served. Amazingly, it seems that out of the countless thousands used, a few of the clamps have somehow managed to survive. The clamps from pre-Columbian South America that have been examined show them to be made of a very unusual alloy, 2% arsenic. 95% copper, with traces of iron, silicon, and nickel. This composition is particularly interesting within Puma Punca because there is no source nickel anywhere in Bolivia. The clips are clearly a compelling link between these ancient structures found all over the world, but more importantly, the builders of them. These amazing artifacts clearly deserve much more attention. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care.